do you think it's possible for a dictator to be completely benign and have everyone's best intentions at heart and actually do good? Do, do we want to allow that kind of authority to exist in such a concentrated place? Like it, to me, it feels a lot like a black hole, uh, very dangerous. You know, en entropy is something you really just can't avoid. You know, it can't be perfect forever. And then we went into space and suddenly we were like, oh, wow, it's this tiny little ball floating around in a giant void of nothing. Welcome to another Kitchen Sink Microscopy. I'm Eric Rosenblatt, and we would absolutely love it if you like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, and all that stuff. Um, that's what cool people do. And I'm Casey Rochefort. We write our own music, so stick around to the end of the episode. There's going to be a new song, as always. Mm -hmm. who, who, in, who in their right mind writes this much music? <laughs> And you're guaranteed to like some of it. So go on to Spotify, check us out. iTunes, you can, you can pick them up there or Amazon. And uh, don't forget to check out our website, ksmvidcast.com. So what are we talking about today? Well, <clears throat> this is a, another one of those episodes where one of us comes up with the idea and the other doesn't really know what we're going to be talking about. But I, I think this is something that you're, you're going to like and, and have a lot to say on. Um, so most viewers would probably know that we, both of us really love Star Trek. Um, and I'm a huge fan of dystopian fiction and stuff like that. Uh, so I kind of feel like maybe we could discuss whether Earth is headed toward a Roddenberry future or an Orwell slash Huxley one. Oh, yeah. So, okay, so we're talking the whole planet, right? Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you, especially if you look at both of those or all of them, uh, you know, Star Trek and stuff, it kind of covers the entire planet. And uh, especially Orwell essentially covers the, the, the whole planet. Yeah, I mean, there's like two ways that unity can go. It's either a dictator controls everything or everybody just kind of works together and, you know, has, has kind of a harmonious governance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, we're definitely nowhere near harmonious governance. I'll say that for sure. <laughs> no, uh, that's true. And I, I think one of the issues there is probably the the division between different territories and things like that. Everybody's kind of got their own thing and they're doing their own thing and everybody's fighting over it and stuff. It's like, there's, there really is no unity either way on, on the planet. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, I mean, we've, we've got these like catchphrases like new world order and stuff, you know, from the eighties. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and to some degree, I think that that still exists in some circles, you know, people wanting that to be a thing and having different interpretations of what it means and all that stuff. And, you know, like, I would love to see a no borders situation where everyone just gets along and comes and goes as they please and treats each other well. Um, yeah, so would I. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, people are so hung up on keeping those imaginary lines in the sand and thinking that, you know, the grass is greener on their side. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, competition, there's something to be said for it. 
healthy in certain situations. Well, when it comes to just living your life as a human being, I don't think competition does anyone any good, you know? Well, I, I would say that competition... Um, be competition is in like my race is better than yours or my <laughs> culture is better than yours. You know? Yes. Okay. Those, those are destructive. Constructive competition, though, is the kind of thing uh, like between businesses competing to create the best thing for the least amount of resources or something like that. Um, that, that that's good. Um, yeah, you don't I mean, have competition in government. Um, uh, well, maybe from one government to another, but within its own like umbrella, I guess you don't have that. Um, well, so, I mean, like in, in any like collaborative environment, right? Like a mm -hmm. team or whatever, whether it's work or school or, you know, a gang, whatever it is. Uh, if you have, um, I've already for, forgotten the word we were just using. Um, competition? Competition. You yeah. have competition within. within beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Crappy beer even. Uh, mm. If you, if you have competition within a group, it, it really just kind of breeds, uh, Contempt. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, I guess that depends on, on what the competition, the, the context of the competition, like what you're hoping to achieve. If you're just going to try to score more points than somebody else. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that that necessarily benefits anybody, but if you're going to try to do better to, to be better than the next guy in, in terms of, or, or girl, in terms of uh, your creative potential or how clever you can be or something like that, I think that's good. And, and by and large, I, I feel like generally that's how things work with people, just, just people on the street. Like I, 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 I'm a big fan of 3D printing, um, 3D printer back there. There's a site called Thingiverse that is constantly, uh, it's kind of open source, sort of thing like you you can download anything and make improvements and changes and things like that and people are constantly making changes and improvements to to old designs um and that's the good kind of competition and the, the bad kind is the kind that results in war right yeah. like that that that's the thing i war to me is abhorrent like i ugh, yeah, i can't stand it war all over the world constantly at any given moment there's countries where people get put to death for beliefs there's you know the decline of our own country where we're seeing all kinds of rampant chaos and all of that spills over into neighbor territory so you know sure every, everything that's happening everywhere has some effect on everyone you know well, definitely a butterfly it, effect thing or whatever, you know? Well, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, we have uh, trade partners and things like that. I, 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 I'm a little bit hesitant to put things into the box of governments. Uh, I, I, I much more see things as a bunch of people in different places with different philosophies and cultures, just, interacting and whatnot i like the government to me is irrelevant that that's the thing yeah, like i more, I, more than government i think it is culture because i mean yeah. the, the government may may have something to do with establishing some of these things but it's it's the culture that perpetuates it you know like people in certain countries will put you to death for being an atheist and you know people that aren't even affiliated with the government will rat you out because it's their culture you know they think you're a piece of shit for not believing in god uh, that their their particular god, especially, you know, and yeah, because but it, it's but the government that, that allows those kinds of things to happen. Because yeah, it, I mean, chicken and egg, though, right? Uh, well, maybe I, I, th that's a whole that that's actually a pretty big conversation right there that, that yeah. you just opened up. Um, <laughs> but I, I yeah, it, I mean, there may be a, a defined answer. It's just I don't know it. Like, I don't know which actually came first. Did, did a government come and say, hey, atheists should die? Or was it the religion that, the, you know, that the government came from? You know? well, it, in, in some places, religious institutions and governments are indistinguishable. They're, they're one and the same. Um, so it, that's, that's a big question. Um, but yeah, I, 
I, I think the the religious doctrine, well, maybe not even the doctrine, but it's the interpretation by uh, presumed leaders and uh, people of of authority who that that kind of dictate that. Like if you if you sit down and read the Bible or the Quran or something like, you're not going to be some kind of crusader or a jihadist or something like that. Like th- that that doesn't come out of that. Like it, it, it comes from these giant institutions that perpetuate these kinds of things and foment uh, this kind of uh, aggressive behavior. But that, that's a, <laughs> man. Here's a question. I've actually pondered this before. So this is a really cool topic that you brought up and that this fits in perfectly. Do you think it is possible for, you know, on, on the path to creating, you know, this um, euphoric society or whatever, you know, um, do you think it's possible for a dictator to be completely benign and have everyone's best intentions at heart and actually do good, but it's all an edict from one person? Do you think that's possible? I, yes, I do, actually. Um, but... The problem with that is when you have an institution that allows for, say, like a king, um, which I'm, I presume you're implying there, <laughs> to uh, or what amounts to a king, uh, to be in charge, they, eventually they die. And that system that's accepted and put into place gets uh, a new person sits in that seat. And that new person, you can't guarantee they're going to be so benevolent and, and kind and considerate as the last person. So, yes, I, I think it's entirely possible. Um, but I, it, it definitely creates a circumstance that could be very, very dangerous. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the only way around that really is, is if that person nearing the end of their life knows that that would be the ultimate outcome and just hits auto destruct or whatever. Hmm. Uh, like I, I once had a, a utopia, a, a little, little pocket of utopian sort of existence that, that I would go to. Um, it was this place called new horizons. It was this beautiful mansion, uh, acres and acres of beautifully man, man manicured, landscapes what however you say that yep you know like nicely trimmed bushes and evenly laid bricks and stuff that this one old dude did on his hands and knees by himself he put this all together like a couple of dance floors and you'd come and you'd you know party with people and there's you know a little bit of you know bring your own beer sort of situation there'd be a dj they'd have games and stuff there was the sex room you know there um <laughs> <laughs> it was uh uh it, it was it was a really cool place but you know um it, as he started aging i mean he was like in his 90s when i started going there um he was like you know what i need to retire but i don't want to sell this place to someone because they're i'm afraid they're not going to treat the women as respectfully as as I have been and so he just sold it to an apartment complex and they bulldozed this beautiful mansion and put up a bunch of apartments and I was like I mean I respect that but fuck (laughs) and that might be better because the 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 potential for harm could could be pretty great and I mean that that the thing is that that's just one small place, but imagine that on a national level or a continental level or something like that. Like yeah. that, that, that is a huge problem. Like, and <clears throat> there are flaws with people. There are bad people. There are people that want to do bad things or stupid people, I guess. Um, so how do we know, you know, do, do we want to allow that kind of authority to exist in such a concentrated place. Like it, to me, it feels a lot like a black hole, uh, very dangerous. Um, yeah. But that, that's interesting though. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like, like a place I'd, I'd like to go. Actually. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we're kind of like, I, it's it, it's connected, but let's go back to the, the whole Roddenberry versus Orwell kind of thing. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, it's been a while since I've read 1984 and Brave New World, probably 20 plus years, but uh, from what I remember, the key element in all those dystopian novels is that some it was somebody's idea of a utopia yeah or it or it started out that way and slid downhill and speaking of roddenberry this is why i actually really like the the picard series is because that's kind of kind of like the natural progression of of a a situation like that you know and entropy is something you really just can't avoid you know it can't be perfect forever well, that's true. And, and like the, the house you're talking about, nothing lasts forever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think if you, if there's enough people who remember that and, and have that kind of fire in their, their soul, you know, they can keep it going in some way. Yeah. Um, as long as they're free to do that, I think that's a problem is when you have like one person that you're dependent on, or everything well if things change it, it can all fall apart yeah i mean the, the key is to I, this is like a, a common theme with me but critical thinking is so important because if you allow someone to manipulate you with fear they take control you know if if yeah. people are are able to see through that bullshit um they can work toward a better future i think um oh, totally i critical thinking i totally agree like we should encourage that greatly. Like we should completely discard the Prussian model for education and go with uh, Cicero's model. Um, that's yet again, a completely different tangent that we should probably talk about at some point um, <laughs> as far as education. But yeah, I, I, cause I, I think if you're, if you're an intelligent person, if you're wise, if you're observant, you can't be fooled that easily. And if everybody's like that, well, it's very hard for somebody who uh, desires to manipulate people for their own ends. It's very difficult for them to come in and, and manipulate those people because those people are like, they're no fools. Um, sadly, I think uh, in this day and age, there's <laughs> the proportion of fools to intelligent people is, is uh disproportionate let's say um but i so as there were things you were talking about before which um i gotta have a little bit more beer um (laughs) but one of the things that i i noted uh was the like we're very earth centric here I think you were talking about like the different factions and stuff, everybody like competing different countries and stuff. We're very earth centric here. We, we kind of feel like this is all there is. And, you know, we're vying for territory or whatever and resources and stuff like that. But imagine if we found life somewhere, like there was, we found a planet with people like, or beings or something on it um or maybe we found like hundreds or thousands of those kinds of places and suddenly like the the it was no longer just earth it was a whole like galactic community um i think that would be a big game changer in that regard like we we would because a lot of this i think is perception it's not reality it's perception it's the way you interpret your observations and a lot of those things are manipulated uh, by they're they're not like it's almost like people are are kind of conditioned to believe a certain way or something whether it's religion or science or school or whatever you know you everybody's got their boxes that, that they fall into um, but if we if if we realize like, whoa, there's like a huge community of other beings out there. I think we'd see things very differently. Um, 
I'd like to believe that, you know, oh, hey, there's aliens, you know, the universe is so much bigger than this. We've been squabbling over, you know, petty bullshit. But when I see so much, like, racism, like, crawling out from under the, the dark recesses uh, in this day and age, you know, where people hate other people just because their skin looks different how, how am i to expect them to look at an alien and be like you know what let's be buddies with these people you know well actually here's the thing i think that what you're talking about there that would be instantly demolished by aliens because at that point it would no longer be we'd be seeing ourselves as different based on melanin or yeah, not such various contrasts. Yeah. you like, we'd be like, Oh my God, there's, there's those things with tentacles up there. All of us are humans and those tentacle things, you know, especially if they're, if they're angry at us or, or conquering or something like that would change things significantly. Tentacles. Um, sure. Because I'm pretty convinced octopi. Uh, mm-hmm aliens yeah oh yeah totally or the whales i mean we saw that in star trek 4 Octopuses? Um, octopuses octopuses uh, i've always thought it was octopi um but you know that that i think that would really make a big difference it, it, i personally i believe like space travel the the space race has changed things as far as the way people see each other um, there, there was a point where everybody kind of just saw the land that they lived on and saw the countries that they lived in and, and borders and whatnot. And then we went into space and suddenly we were like, oh, wow, it's this tiny little ball floating around in a giant void of nothing. And this is all we have. I, I, I firmly believe that the space race is the thing that ended the Cold War. Um, in for a variety of reasons, actually, there's uh, I could go into that, but um, yeah, you know, in, you in terms of the people, yeah, um, like like let's say you know a, a call back to a previous episode. Let's say we go colonize Venus, right? Yeah, we go to build cloud cities and stuff. What's the type of person that's going to be the pioneers there? You hmm. know the the scientists and the engineers and the, you know, like these well-educated people who, you know, there's strong statistical correlation between education and, you know, being a decent human. Um, well, okay. Yes. But those may be the people who build the things, but the people who actually go there are going to be like a little bit more like cowboys. Because uh, scientists aren't risk takers necessarily; they're not the people who like ride a rocket or something. I mean, like the astronauts and stuff like that, and the scientists that are going to have to go there to construct everything. I mean, they're they're the pioneers. Like we can't just send literal cowboys to Venus and expect them to know how to get by. Well, um, maybe maybe so, we can nowadays. Um, I'm just saying, like maybe the way to build a utopia is to just break away from these assholes. I'm doing it on a different planet. <laughs> well, maybe. Um, yeah, that's a good point. But then the thing is, I don't know that just because you're educated, you're necessarily going to be a good person. Um, you know, you oh, can look I, at like the strong correlation. It's not, a, of course, a guarantee. But... There were a lot of very intelligent Nazis. Um, so I, I maybe I, I possibly. But we had Einstein, and we won, so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and he came out of Germany, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Uh, so, I, I kind of think... It's not always about numbers either, right? No, you know, that's true, yeah. You know, um, I mean, sometimes it's just... Sometimes all it takes is, like, is for people to just actually experience something. You know, so, so many times, it, it, it's just like the kid that's like, I'm not going to like broccoli. I'm not going to like broccoli. And then you stick it in his mouth and he's like, all right, fine. I like broccoli. <laughs> Especially with ranch dressing, by the way. Oh, <laughs> man. So good. And, and braised in an oven. Like, Ooh. Yeah. I don't like cooked vegetables, but okay. Yeah. To, to each their own. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but, yeah. What I was getting at there is, is basically like, I, I think if people tried a form of government that they've been conditioned to be afraid of for no particular reason, they'd probably be like, Oh, you know what? This is actually not so bad and people are getting along and healthy and happy. You know. And, well, and uh, people who know me, uh, would know what I'm about to say. Why not try no government at all? Uh, yeah. Couldn't we just all get along, right? Like maybe sex and trade is all we really need, you know? Um, do we need a bunch of uh, self-proclaimed leaders and intellectuals telling people what to do? Or should we just let things go the way they go and, and see how it ends up. Um, yeah. You know, like uh, the moon is a harsh mistress. That would be a book recommendation there um, by Heinlein. Um, I, I feel like government doesn't have to be a tell you what to do kind of entity, but it always becomes that that's the thing. But like, that's that's the kid saying he doesn't like broccoli before he's tried it. But show me where there's a government that's an advisory board and not a dictatorial authoritarian system with dudes with guns enforcing the law, right? Like, I, I have yet to see it. Um, there, well, I mean, there's... Did they change it up in England where... Cops have guns again, or well, they have guns. They just the the, the cops on the street don't necessarily always carry them, yeah. but they do have them because you kind of have to have them because the criminals have guns, even though guns are illegal there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's basically just like maybe the maybe the best system hasn't been built yet. I um, I totally agree. Yeah, I, I I'm completely agree, and I think experimentation is really important there. Yeah. Um, testing, like I, I, being a person of science, I believe like we should try things and experiment um, and, and objectively look at the results, not, not the, the feelings you have about how you think it is or how you want it to be, but how it really is. Yeah. Because here's the thing, the, the thing that you learn from school in, in having group projects is that no matter how well you think you work together, you're going to be stepping on each other's toes at some point. Someone's not going to pull their weight as much as you are. There's going to be conflicts. Uh-oh. Your audio. What? Oh, oh no, no, you're good. Never mind. Well, I was <laughs> glitch in the system. I think it's the NSA, as usual. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. There's uh, going to be conflict. Right. There, yeah. There's going to be conflict because there's no one in charge and it, 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 it's just kind of a, a, kind of a given that taking a bunch of people with free will and sticking them together and expecting them to live in harmony without something to structure the harmony uh, is, is kind of like a pipe dream. Well, I, I, I agree that that pans, out, that pans out scientifically, you know? Yeah. Like their hierarchical systems naturally evolve. Uh, it, it, it's just the way it works out. Um, but I don't know the way things are throughout the world. I don't know that the hierarchical systems that exist are the correct ones. And I think they're flawed. And I think that maybe they've been around too long or something like that. Uh, the people who are quote in charge aren't necessarily the best person for the job. Um, so how do you create a system uh, that, that encourages that or, or requires that, I guess. Um, yeah. Another it, I, it, and like you said, I, I don't think we've, we've come up with the best system yet. Um, right. I, I think yeah. there's going to be a lot of time and a lot more experimentation if, if, if we can manage that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, like another thing that I, I say a lot is once you slap a name on something, you've changed it, you know, like that's totally true. You know, we, we keep naming these styles of government and stuff, but 
when you do that, it, it kind of builds in this automatic fixed structure sort of implication, right? Oh, if we change things too much, it's not going to be X government style anymore. It's going to be yeah. the other one, or, you know, it's something that's never been tried. So it obviously can't work. Or <laughs> Well, that's a completely non-scientific way to do things. Right. Or, or, uh, or like, Oh, well that only works in country of size X, you know, like it, it, yeah, it's I, dismissive, you know, like I don't want to try anything different sort of attitude. And, and if, if you just, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to draft this form of, of government where it, it's inbuilt that it will be fluid, you know, it will be constantly changing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like the idea of a, of a constitution is nice, but the fact that it's so difficult to change and update and, you know, make it to fit the times and, and to learn from mistakes and stuff like that is a huge inherent flaw. Well, and just like the Bible, it's written by humans. So oh, yeah. can you say there are no flaws in it? Probably not. I mean, certainly in the U.S., uh, our system is pretty wise, I guess. The, the origins, the, the structure of it is well thought out, but it's not perfect. Um, yeah, it, it, ooh, that's, that's a good thought. Yeah, I, ha I had another idea, but it escapes me. Yeah, More I mean, beer. <laughs> we were pretty well thought out, but I mean, and this is no no fault of the founding fathers or anything, but you know, the foresight was only so far. Um, they couldn't have possibly foreseen the kinds of technological advances and you know the, the social evolution that went with it and. I, I, nobody can see the future, right? No, no, that's true. In fact, if you go back to and look at some of those videos from like the 50s and the 60s where they're talking about like the house of the future or something like that. Yeah. And it, it is, it's entertaining, um, yeah. but it, it's totally not accurate. Um, yeah, I, I think the key to a good government, like good science, is to know that you don't know that much mm -hmm. and to keep that in mind. You know? Well, yeah, and, and maybe not be so literal or uh, specific about things and maybe work on the human element more than anything. I, I mean, I guess to some extent the, the Constitution was kind of based on that. Uh, it's a, it doesn't worry about technology or societal changes and kind of accounts for that, but it's based on people's understanding uh, their understanding of how people work um, which wasn't complete of course nobody's understanding is complete and if you think you know how people work and if you think you know the right way to run a society or a country or a continent you're a fucking idiot by the way um <laughs> because nobody knows that it's not as simple as it seems um, but so, yeah, I, going back to this whole like dystopia, utopia kind of dichotomy, I, I, I feel like w my prediction personally is somewhere in the middle. Like, I think the future is going to be a lot more like Red Dwarf, like advanced technology, but basically societally the same. Uh -huh. we're, we're, we're the same people. In fact, if you go back in time, we're probably the same people uh, that we were. We haven't really changed that much, but there's more technology. No, That's my prediction for the future, because if you look at how things were in the past and how things have changed and trends and things like that, like we're kind of the same people. We just have a lot more tech around us. Yeah, like, to, I don't, I don't know. Maybe the definition of a dystopia is, is is a little bit too subjective, but you know, anything or a we, utopia. Yeah, anything. remember that. I mean, because the thing is, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Like, you you don't know what makes a person happy. Tell right. me that. Like, if you can answer that question, if you can answer that question for everybody, 
then you might just know the right way to do things. But I can tell you, that's not how it is. Like everybody wants different things. Different things make different people happy. And, and you can't create a system that covers it all. And so many people through history have tried to create such systems, but it's all subjective. It's based on what they want and not what everybody wants. And as soon as you try to cover what everybody wants, it's like whack-a-mole, like it's impossible. I mean, that's just my two cents, I guess. More beer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, but anyway, like anything that we could describe as a dystopia, like Nazi Germany or whatever, there's, they're basically outliers, you know, yeah. like far ends of the spectrum. Yeah. And, um, you know, things that people like to point to as utopias where people don't really have any like wants for things like health and housing and stuff like that. Uh, those are outliers as well. You know, like their situations panned out in such a way that you know, things worked well, but it's by no means perfect, you know? So it obviously I, I, I definitely agree with you. It's probably going to be more or less the same throughout the entire lifespan of our species. Mm -hmm. uh, however long that may be. Uh, yeah. Well, and that, that is one of the things like uh, technology is a double-edged sword science, the products of science, let's say not science itself. That's a process. Um, but you know, technological advancement can create very helpful things. Like it can, it can create amazing, wondrous things and solve big problems, but it can also create great harm and, and extreme dangers, you know, that, it, and just look at like nuclear, uh, the, the whole entire, whether you talk about nuclear power or nuclear arms, things like that, like it's highly destructive, but also highly awesome. And so it's all in like who's using it and what they're using it for. Like AI is a thing too. Like that could actually be our undoing in the end. Maybe um, I don't know, or it could take us to uncharted territories in other galaxies um so yeah I, I, mm, I i would like to to believe like i i you know star trek has been a huge influence on me growing up like all the the treks um like a giant inspiration and and i think it's good because it, it kind of speaks to the more hopeful aspect of things like, you know, technology can bring you all kinds of great things and this is what we should strive for. Uh, and, and actually Star Trek has had real world uh, effects. People inspired to do things that they wouldn't have otherwise thought about. Um, and, and that's a good thing. I, I think there was a series how William Shatner changed the world or something like that, that kind of talked about that. Um, oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And so I would prefer that people focus on the positive, like what we could achieve with it, like the Elon Musk kind of thing, like SpaceX, you know, let's build rockets. Let's go to places. I wish they go to Venus, but apparently Mars is the destination for whatever reason. Um, but at least we're doing something. Well, that's right? because Elon Musk himself isn't really an idea guy. Yeah, he's just a, he's just a um, capital <laughs> source. Um, well, I mean, he, he he does it like Steve Jobs. He's kind of you know. Yeah, I mean, he's like just he hasn't invented anything. He hasn't like headed up anything. Like he he basically just got to where he was, and he's doing some cool stuff with his power. Well, it's know? like it, yeah, he's a big picture guy, like like Steve Jobs or or uh, uh, Microsoft guy. Don't remember his name now. Yeah, uh, Bob Gates or something. Yeah, Bob, <laughs> Bill Ross or something like that. Um, a or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, so I mean that that's the good side of things. Um, I'd like to see more of that and less war. 
Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, man, this is, there's so many angles. Like I, I, my head is full of thoughts. Um, yeah. I mean like novels like Aldous Huxley wrote, um, because he did, he did more than one. Yeah. Yeah, It wasn't just brave new world. He, He really liked to write these so-called utopian novels or whatever that same thing with Orwell too. Yeah. But, but, but those are memorable ones. Those are kind of significant. So, but it's important, important messages, even though it's fiction, you know, because it, it shows you that no matter how hard you strive to do good, uh, there's going to be imperfections. There's going to be people that don't like your version of good. Uh, and, and vice versa, you know, if, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, really, it's like, nobody sets out to be like, I'm going to commit evil today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like, they all think they're doing good, right? You know, yeah, exactly. I, I would I would argue, even Hitler thought he was doing good. Yeah. Um, he, and there's, it, a, there's a quote where he said, like, you know, I'm just doing my Christian duty, you know, yeah. like, he really actually firmly believed that he was doing God's work and stuff, you know. It, sure. And, and I think that's a cautionary tale, um, as most science fiction is, by the way. Um, but that kind of situation is definitely something people should take to heart. Like, intent is not the same as results. Um, you can want all you want for something to be good or for something to be uh, a utopia or whatever. But in the end, you're going to end up with a handful of dystopia. Because the thing is, in order to actually affect the changes you want, you have to know all the variables. And the variables are unquantifiable. This is the thing. Like a human mind cannot calculate all the data required to be able to do that, to be able to even form a framework or a plan or anything like that. It, like, it's, it's like quantum computing level, which ooh, quantum computers are coming soon. So uh, get ready for that. Um, <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like people think that I, I think it comes from a, an oversimplification of the perception of the universe or the world or whatever that people think it's very, very easy. Like people talk about the economy. Oh, it's just, you just do this and do that. Well, it's actually not that simple. There's thousands, millions of moving parts there and you move one thing and you've now moved millions of others. And such is human society. And uh, the, the thing that led me to voluntarism is basically that like, I don't think we can, we can figure out the best way to do something. I, it's not possible. It's better just let things go and hope for the best than to try to manipulate things. Because when we do that, we always end up making things worse. Um, but I mean, not to be too horse, much of a downer, I guess. No, I, uh, I get that. Like I, I've been in, in, in that, philosophical mindset before in my life so i do kind of understand it but in in a broad overview what what i see that sort of philosophy boiling down to is is whether you are more concerned about making things better for the world on the whole or for individuals who are best equipped to survive you know so it's more like a selfish self selfish versus selfless sort of mentality. And of course there's a gradient and stuff, but. But then what we've talked about, like how do you know what is best for everybody? You know, if you have a uniform system, what is the system that is best for everybody? It could be somewhere in that direction on the gradient, you know, strive for that. But I mean, like, but then if, if, if you're, if you're calculating things on an individual basis, I mean, you could just do that. If, if that's your metric, you know, if, if you got a mountain man living somewhere and he, he feels like he's in his own little utopia, we well, can say, well, there you go. There's perfection. 
there's a utopia. Yeah. Hurrah. <laughs> but you know, when, when you, if, if you apply the same uh, metrics to either end of the spectrum, the whole world, you know, mm -hmm. uh, how do you calculate how well individuals are doing if individuals are left to their own devices? Well, I, I, I don't know. Um, but I, I know that the there attempt mass suffering, well, the attempt <laughs> to do that might actually be futile and might actually be counterproductive. Um, that's kind of my point about that. Although I, I feel like we're kind of drifting away from the, the original topic, but I think it's related. It is um, related. And it's, and it's not really drifting because I, I, th I think what either end of the spectrum is doing is, is going against human nature, right? Yeah. Humans don't want to be told what to do. So, you know, I, even a utopia, I believe, is going to require a dictator to actually achieve, right? You know, hypothetically or whatever. Okay. And hypothetically, for individuals to thrive without government, it's going to require deconstructing the genetically ingrained societal mores that we have constructed over tens of thousands of years as a collective. Well, I, I think those things would emerge on their own. It's kind of like you see someone's house burning and you go over and help them rescue their dog. Like you don't have to be told to do that. You just do it because it's the right thing to do. Um, I, that might be a overly simplified summary of that, but I, yeah, I think I mean, that's kind of how people operate in general. Um, even if you look at the animal kingdom, like there are, lone wolves or whatever right but show me how many aren't on the endangered species list or have gone extinct or you know like have no i i, I don't mean point of humanity you know I, I don't mean you have to be a lone wolf you could definitely be part of a global community or an interplanetary community um but the idea that there's this kind of one size fits all right way to do things uh i think is a kind of vaporware like I, I don't think that's something that you could actually achieve unless you were actually god um so i just so happen to be <laughs> <laughs> well there's that picture of you as jesus um so yeah that's the and, ultimate irony god is an atheist <laughs> <laughs> that it would be oh man uh that's a this is actually like a really interesting conversation i feel like there's probably we could probably talk about this for like quite a few more hours um because it's definitely yeah and, and we probably should we should come back to it actually and kind of yeah there's, there's a lot of angles to go there a lot of doors we've opened and, yeah you know at some point we, sh we should go back at old episodes and look at what we need to follow up on because <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i agree a lot of these situations where we we kind of leave things hanging so mm -hmm. <laughs> well we got a little bit more time i i um i want to go back to the whole um like bigger than earth kind of thing uh roddenberry orwell huxley whatever um and kind of get back to that like based on how things currently are on planet earth. Um, what's going to be the ultimate outcome if we don't annihilate each other by some kind of like Terminator style thing or global thermonuclear war or something like that. Um, if we follow the same trajectory we're currently on, like where are we going to end up? Yeah. Like, is it going to be more authoritarianism or is it going to be something a little more liberated, I guess? Well, even outside of government, like an even bigger picture, like an, like an eagle eye view 
I feel like what what's going on in most of the world right now is very much like slapping a whole bunch of band-aids on stuff or you know, Oh, I totally agree. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it's I, like okay, so it, the way I see it, you have a house. The wood is full of termites. It's all rotted away. It's like hollow. It's basically like balsa wood. And you're like, oh, we, we, we can fix this. It just needs a lick of paint. We'll yeah. put a coat of paint on it and it'll fix it. Like, it'll be as good as new. It'll stick like, together then. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, mm, no, I, I, <laughs> there has to be a different approach here. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I just, I definitely. God, there's so many angles to go. I know. Directions to go in here. Yeah. Um, the, the, okay, l- l- let me just say this. If you, if you had to pick utopia or dystopia to describe the world today, which would you pick right now? Overall, because I think there's pockets of both in different places like utopias to me are like tiny Island nations. Um, and dystopias are big cities. Um, I think the world as a whole, especially with this interconnectedness technology, um, satellites and drones and stuff like that. Like not the, not the kind, the little kind you control with a joystick, but like the military ones, um, I think we're verging closer to a dystopia, especially because I feel like something that was started very simple, like governmental systems and things like that. It, it was very simple. You look at the constitution. It's just like a, it's a small, tiny book, a couple pages uh, speaking about the U S and other countries have similar things. It's very, very simple but over time has become very complex and complexity creates uh, the potential for abuse and uh, corruption. And I, I, I think it's gotten so complex and so huge and so powerful that that corruption can create a lot of destructive uh, potential, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's my more beer. <laughs> For um different reasons I do agree with you. Uh, I think we're we're all definitely tilting the scale toward dystopia. And for me it's because you know, it's like we're almost there, right? Like I think any given person that is walking down the street in Chicago in like negative 10 degree weather and they've got like a vest and a coat on or whatever and they see some homeless person in just a t-shirt like shivering and they're blue and you know they maybe take their coat off and and let that person be warm you know like show Mm -hmm. some act of kindness or whatever but when it comes to how many people in the world are suffering are are hungry, are without clean water, without medical, without homes. Yet we, we have so much affluence throughout, like, why are we willing to give a coat, but not lift people up with the excess wealth that's, that's floating around, you know, like there's just so much, so many like people hoarding all the chips on the table kind of thing that that's where I see a lot of the, the problems stemming from is people just feeling that competition. They're like, I got to win the game and winning the game to them means having the most toys or, you know, like yeah, that, that, to swim in. Or, that's know? a huge problem. Like, <clears throat> and, and I think it's a cultural one. The, the idea that you have to have more toys oh, yeah. or, or stuff or something like that. (laughs) Um, But uh, when you get into other countries, like some of the problems have to do with totalitarian governments that don't 
let people do the things they need to do to liberate themselves or lift themselves out of poverty. Um, they extract. Not that, that's, not that that's unfixable. You know? No, no, it totally is fixable. Yeah, I, I, I ag agree. But what pisses me off is when, like, the place I live in the United States, when the, the elected representatives uh, that we vote for um, decide to go to war with Iraq, when shit's happening in Africa, uh, like, really heinous things, like, we should be focused on that. And they, they, they talk about Iraq and Iran and Syria and all this bullshit like it's some kind of humanitarian thing. It's like, no, no, no. You just want to prop up the petrodollar. Um, so get the fuck out. Fuck yeah. you. Um, <laughs> look at those a... people down. Go, go south. Uh, <laughs> you know, they the actually ultimate... need some help. Isn't that the ultimate hypocrisy? How people like to bring up a current event, how people are demonizing riots because of violence, right? And they're all about going to war with other countries to defend freedom. And stuff yeah. Like that. <laughs> okay. That, that's actually a good point. Yeah. Uh, not that, I, I mean, because personally I'm a pacifist. I believe initiation of force can never be justified. Um, but you bring up a really good point that there's people who are like, all about like dropping bombs on Syria and, and uh, Afghanistan and stuff like that. And, and then they're like, Oh, there's people like throwing Molotov cocktails uh, into uh, businesses and stuff like that. I, you know, Mazel Tov cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> Someone actually said that. Oh, jeez. Oh man. Yeah. So, I mean, like, not to go too far into the weeds about violence and stuff, but I, I just, I, I see hypocrisy like that as, as kind of like a, a huge hurdle that we need to jump over. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't see enough people, ex, you know, practicing self-reflection, you know, looking yeah. at, 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 the, at themselves and be like, Hey, am I being a hypocrite here? Like, exactly. Like, like, I've said time and time again, like I cannot stand a double standard. The most hated thing in yeah. my life, the thing that I hold a neutron bomb for in my soul is hypocrisy. I yeah. fucking I mean, hate it. No one's immune to it, right? No, I mean, that's true. But you know, like but but we we have to strive to catch it mm -hmm. and, and fix it, right? So, mm -hmm. so Anytime you find yourself in one of those situations, I mean, at least with me, I, I, I look at the two sides of the coin that, that I'm, I'm riding, right? Yeah. Uh, like, and, and I'm like, what, what about these things makes me feel this way? Like, what values are there? And you, you just kind of try to, like, use a process of elimination to find out what you really believe, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you can kind of guide yourself into one side of the coin by examining how you arrived at those decisions. Well, yeah. And ap applying whatever logic you expect other people to adhere to, to yourself. Um, I, and, and me, I don't believe there's two sides. I, I think it's a, a spectrum and not yeah. just a, left, right, like up, down kind of spectrum. I think it's three or four dimensional. There, yeah. There's a lot of factors at play here. Um, a lot of things to consider. And to put yourself in such a box is, is only to limit your own abilities to, to affect change or do things you want to do. Um, and yeah, I, I, I ooh, man, ooh. Oh, yeah yeah so i mean i mean so like if if your goal is to move toward let's just say toward a mm -hmm. utopian society a lot of hypocrisy has to be dealt with you know yeah. we you know as as a society like globally right we we have the idea that violence is bad yet we thrive on we've built nations on violence I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, can you point to a nation that wasn't built on violence? Maybe Canada. Ooh. 
no, Canada was definitely violent. You know? Yeah, yeah. It, it was a British colony and a French colony and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah all these nothing. And came from violence. Yeah, and all the, all this patriotism, born of violence. It's perpetuated by violence. Yeah, exactly. Like we've violence. killed a bunch of people in this land, mm. and therefore it's ours. And yeah. hey, wave the flag. You know, yeah. like flag, uh, I, I can't get behind that. The flag you salute is all about violence. Yeah. You yeah, know? that's that's totally true. And that goes for any country you're in. Yeah. Even no matter where you are. Very few, countries, very few countries salute their flag. That's a very nationalist um, Nazi thing, by the way. Uh, yeah. Well, and that, the, the, the whole, like, salute and stuff, I think, goes back to the Cold War or something like that, in the U.S. at least, um, which does bother me because it feels like, you know, the whole, like, Pledge of Allegiance, like, oh, this is yeah. skeevy. Like, ugh, I feel all, like, gooey <laughs> inside. I, I, there's, there's other nations, but among these nations that do Pledges of Allegiance, North Korea, Nazi mm-hmm. Germany, mm-hmm. United States of America. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, there's probably more. Um, not that you're required to, um, but uh, you might get into trouble if you don't. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I it, ooh. Yeah, oh man. Oh, this is such a good conversation. This is really really good. I, I it and I feel like there's so much more we could talk about because I want to go into the like global like the whole planet earth thing and you know interplanetary thing um you know what if there's life out there and stuff how, how do we deal with it i think we gotta I, fix more shit here before we even entertain that idea you know I, like, i'll tell you what i i think we're not gonna fix any shit here until <laughs> we see some kind of extraterrestrial life like but until I mean, we if, realize that there's other huh you know? like that? what if we actually have seen it but, you know, the governments are basically, you know, trying to prevent panic or whatever. You know, uh, like- I don't want to spread any panic or alarm. <laughs> yeah, well, I, that's a good point. Like, that, that could actually be a thing. Um, because it would completely destroy their narrative and their power, uh, their perception of power, let's say. They don't, they don't actually have any power, by the way. Um, it's perception. Um, but I mean, there, there's a few nuggets out there that, that suggest maybe this might actually be a thing. Um, yeah. I, oh man. Wow. Holy shit. This is, uh, it's a good episode. If, if aliens came on mass and, showed themselves to the entire world unanimously just all at once like landed on every continent and and uh just like said, independence hey, day style right yeah here we are you know what what do you think how do you think earth would respond to that today well it depends on whether they're uh benign or whether they're aggressive imagine True. Yeah. uh if a bunch let, let's, let's say it. let's say they they there's some kind of alien force that's far superior like they could basically push a button and planet earth explodes if they got so, here they're already far superior yeah yeah <laughs> well, that's absolutely true um but how would that change society if there was some kind of extraterrestrial life force uh that that was basically almost like a god as compared to us like we have transistors and computers and we're like verging into quantum computers and they're like "Eh, yeah we got a black hole generator we can just like blink through space time like like it's nothing um you know, like, oh, we push a button, your planet explodes. 
we could, in fact, no, not just your planet. We'll, we'll blow up your entire uh, solar system. <laughs> um, like, how would we react to that? Like, would that change people's perceptions? How would that change our own interactions? Like, how would we see each other? Wouldn't yeah. we see each other as more together than apart at that point? Like, I, I, I think we would. Like, we would be like, holy shit, we're being invaded. We got to fight. We got to unite. We got to, you know, fight off these invaders and stuff. I think that would actually be a, a healthy thing for planet Earth to yeah. uh, fight off an alien invasion. I mean, benign or malevolent, I, as an American, I mean, maybe, hopefully this is different in the rest of the world at large but as an american i feel like even if a superior race of beings appeared the american brainwashing that we're number one would still reign supreme america fuck yeah, yeah. i mean like <laughs> we're certainly not really number one in anything well no here's the thing like we were up we, there, kind of, but you know, well, like we actually like militarily, right? We we have we spend more money than what is it? The next ten countries under us in terms of military spending. Um, okay, yeah. so maybe we're number one in military spending, but that's kind yeah. of a shitty metric, right? Well, <laughs> we've got some technology. We can like drop drones on people from a thousand miles away. Whatever. I'm talking, I'm talking uh, about like education and health, and you know, like things that matter. You know, but th th those things don't matter until you're faced with extinction on a global level, and I think that would actually like change people's minds. And it's really sad that we would have to come to that for people to realize we're all one people. We're not, we're not like a bunch of different nations. We're one nation and it's planet earth. Yeah. Um, say, they're, say they're more like Vulcans. You know, I, I would hope I would totally hope, but I, I fully think America would fucking attack them well, and, <laughs> and try to take their technology. Make their own. Maybe like, we're the goddamn Borg. Let's face it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I, I would hope there were, uh, you know, uh, more sound minds in uh, that regard. But yeah, there's there's an issue with the military and your training and conditioning and stuff like that. There's no individualism um, because that would actually like fix that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that oh man, we do need to do an episode on yeah, um, <laughs> the, the the whole idea of. Uh, obedience Ooh, yeah man yeah. oh so we've we've opened a bunch of cans um <laughs> of different ideas uh I've, I've that we should do beers so maybe it's maybe yeah it's i think it's probably a good point to end on like we, we've covered a lot um i i have a few notes but pff, whatever um <laughs> yeah. notes are irrelevant <laughs> Hmm. That's definitely a good one. Definitely. Um, yeah. Oh man. And we'll probably come back to this because actually I don't I don't think we covered enough things. Yeah. Um so if you've stuck it out this far, give us your thoughts in the comments. Is it is it more on the utopian side or the dystopian side? Yeah, and, you know, think about, like, authoritarianism, greater centralization of governance, surveillance, as far as dystopian stuff goes, global markets and communication, cryptocurrency, uh, in the utopian side, uh, my utopian side, okay, remember, it's subjective, um, technology, <laughs> technology is neutral, like, it, it, it could help us or it could completely obliterate us um i want to hear your thoughts and uh comments and yeah keep the conversation going down there in the comment section yeah. thanks for deep sink diving with us in a perfect world <laughs> we're not gonna break into song <laughs> oh,
should. I'm sure there's a few people who would want us to. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, all right. Well, have a good night, everybody.